Hey guys, Goat Mumber here. Thanks for stopping by and checking out a little project we're working on. Today's mission is going to be work on the power washer. Now the power washer, I used to use it quite a bit, you know, a couple times a week back in my sprint car racing days, but since that's been long ago, this thing has ended up in the back of the barn and rarely gets used. I pulled it out a couple years ago to use it uh, washing down the eaves of the house and stuff, and I noticed it just didn't run worth a crap. And I had to do the uh, El Cheapo Quickie carburetor clean on it to get it working, which is mainly just yanking the bowl off, washing it out a little bit, and getting it going. But judging from what I saw at that time, I knew that we were going to need to give this thing a lot more TLC than, than just that half-ass cleaning. So uh, it's on my list of things to do, and today I've decided to put it up here on the motorcycle lift and get to work on it. The first thing I did was take off the cap, and uh, uh, I knew it was ugly, and I knew it was going to get worse. Didn't even bother to try to crank this thing. I immediately just took the tank off, took it outside, and dumped all the nastiness out of it, and uh, the foul-smelling old gasoline and it had a lot of rust and debris in there. I don't know how well you'll be able to see what's going on in here, but uh, it's, it's really not good. So first thing I want to do is get the rust out. There's a couple, three, four different ways you can do this. We're going to do two of them. I'm going to share those with you. First and the easiest thing you can do is just get you some gravel like this, this is out of our driveway. And we're gonna put some of that in there, put the lid on it, and we're gonna agitate it. Uh, if you don't have access to some gravel, you can run up to Home Depot or Lowe's, and you can go to the garden center, and you can get some of this, uh, you can just get a small bag of this stuff. It doesn't cost very much, so there's just some gravel there. If that's not gonna work for you, uh, one other thing you can do is take some, uh, some nuts and bolts and put a couple, three handfuls of that in there. Put the lid back on it, and then what we're going to do is, is just agitate this and rotate it and keep doing that. Basically just the way uh, reloaders do when they're polishing brass to reload their guns. It goes into a tumbler along with some material, uh, some abrasive material. In our case, it's going to be nuts and bolts or gravel. If you want to come up with an ingenious way of making some sort of wooden uh, jig and hooking this up to your low speed drill and hanging it off the end of your workbench and letting it rotate, you can do that. I saw one guy, he strapped it onto the side of his uh, four wheeler tire and drove around with it. Either way, it's gonna work just fine. Now, this is an old steel gas tank and if you have an aluminum gas tank, you might wanna be careful about your agitation and what you're gonna use. I probably would not use uh, nuts and bolts because they have sharp pointed ends and they may end up denting your your, uh, uh, your tank. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my gravel out of the driveway. We're gonna put some in there. We're gonna close it up and we're gonna agitate it for a while and see what the results are. Okay guys, after, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes of manual agitation and sore arms and shoulders, we're back with our tank. I must say the results not too shabby. I mean, there were some big chunks of rust and stuff that came out of there. When I dumped all those rocks out, they were all just one color, just rust and rust dust. So in its present state, I wouldn't have any problems using it just the way it is. Um, we we're lucky to save this tank. I think we were just this side of losing it. Uh, it was it was really pretty crappy, but I wouldn't have any problems using it just the way it is there I've rinsed it out a couple times with some gas. I could probably get it a little cleaner, but uh, You know, I, th I think it's pretty good there, but what I want to do is try to even do a little better job on it and Not to mention that I'm kind of curious, but I want to try the old Apple cider vinegar program. We're gonna fill the tank up with apple cider vinegar not white vinegar apple cider or just cider vinegar we're going to let it sit overnight, dump it out, and, and see what kind of result we get from that. I think it'll be pretty good. Uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's a shame, though, that, you know, I, I let this stuff go. 
uh, the moral of the story is, you know, take better care of your stuff with as many things that we have running around here that have motors on them. Uh, I just plain forget to, to crank them all up and let them run. The guy where I get my small motor parts and, and parts for this, he told me that he could have a guy doing carburetor rebuilds full time and doing nothing else. You know, with the 10% uh, ethanol we have in our fuels now, which is kind of an idiot idea anyway. Uh, fortunately, we're not going to 15%, thank God, but he just said it really just eats up the rubber parts in these motors. And, and all these parts, you know, come from overseas now. And the rubber over there is just not what the American rubber used to be, you know, 10, 25, or I'm sorry, 20 or 30 years ago. The rubber is crap. So the ethanol eats it up. And uh, his advice to me is use high octane fuel, use fuel stabilizer, especially anything that's going to be sitting up, and go crank your motors, you know, periodically. You know, now everybody has a smartphone. Go to your calendar. Uh, set up an appointment there and you know every 30 days 60 days 90 days I don't care whatever is good for you have that alert go off and it says hey go start your stuff let it run for a little bit and uh, shut her down if you want to get real uh, picky about stuff especially things that are gonna be sitting up for a long period of time uh, most of the float bowls have a, a drain on it where you can drain the fuel out take your WD-40 shove it up in there spray it around WD-40 works good because uh, it's also flammable so it won't hurt on the restart but you just gonna have to take better care of your stuff so let's try the apple cider vinegar give it a, a good 12 hour soak and let's see what kind of result we get from that stand by okay guys after a good long soak actually I let it soak all night the cider vinegar wait till you see this this thing's badass. I mean, all that's in there is just some light, some light, uh, like surface pitting, surface rust. Nothing to, uh, nothing like it, like it was. I mean, there was crap all in this tank, all in the sides. I was looking for a white bucket to pour this. Uh, cider vinegar into so you could see it but I didn't have anything but uh, blue and orange but uh, it was pretty crappy as soon as I opened up the cap you could just see all the stuff floating in the top so if you have a rusty gas tank I would definitely recommend the cider vinegar routine and uh, let it soak as long as you can if you've got a real bad tank and and you've got 12 to 24 hours to do it come back the next day by all means the longer the better but this is a great deal you guys check it out so next time you guys be safe and we'll see you down the road adios